All right, Everyday Player Baseball from Dave and Colleen. Here it is. Gonna go over the charts, the gameplay charts, and the rosters, and we'll do some sample at bats to show you how it works. Real simple, straightforward game with some unique, with, with a few things that are somewhat unique to tabletop baseball. So I'm getting ready to play a game between the 1970 Cincinnati Reds and the 1970 Montreal Expos. It's actually the opening day game for the 1970 season at Crosley Field before they moved into the, <clears throat> excuse me, Riverfront Stadium. So let's start by taking a look at, actually I wanna go over the batters first. Um, the game comes with, doesn't have player cards. It comes with roster sheets. And this is what you're gonna see for, say, 1970. So it's basically two pages, but I printed front and back. This is every player that played that position in that season, okay? How many games they played at that position. You can see that Pete played 155 games in right field that year. Um, and then on the reverse side are the pitchers and a suggested batting order, the Reds record, and how they finished up 1970. And then you have your starting pitchers here. This is their pitch factor. This is based on earned run average. The higher the number, the better. This is their distance factor. That's how many innings they can go before they begin to tire. Once they begin to tire, this decreases by one inning. So into the ninth inning, Gary Nolan, this becomes a five. That will make sense later. These are their batting uh, ratings. Um, their running ratings. And then I guess I could just go over this real quick. The running ratings, the first number you'll see is his stealing rating. Okay? His stealing rating is a negative two, which means anytime you roll on the steal chart, you're going to reduce the number, reduce the dice roll by two. Um, fielding rating plus one, if it goes to the fielding chart, like if it's a bouncer to the pitcher, you roll the dice, you add one to the dice total. And then bunt chart. His bunt rating is a plus two. Negative two is the worst. Plus two is the best. Same with fielding. Negative two the worst. Plus two the best. Bunting. If you're on the bunt chart, you want to bunt with Gary Nolan, you roll the dice, you add two to the total. And you can see how that works. So with another running situation here is, let's see, who is this? This is Jim Merritt. He's actually the starter today. If there's no slash, okay, that means his steal rating is negative two and his on-base running is negative two. And those are all dice roll adjustments. Okay? I'm trying to find another example because there are some examples where... Here's, here's, an, here's an example. This 0-2, that means... Let's see, who is this? Don Gullett. He has a 0 steal rating, which I guess is, be is better than his negative 2 on-base running. So... Want to take an extra base with Don Gullet? You subtract two from the dice roll. All right. So, for those who like to do as played lineups, you can definitely do it in this game because every player is represented as well. So, there you are. All right. So, Let's take a look at let's take a look at Pete Rose, okay? Batters have a couple of different ratings. This seven, the higher this number, the higher this is based on average, this number right here. The higher the number, typically the better average. Now I don't know the secret formula, obviously, that Dave does. 
but Rose is rated a seven. This right here is a letter rating based on power and ability to hit for extra bases. U is the lowest rating, double Z is the highest rating, okay? Pete Rose is rated a W. This column right here may have an additional rating, B or I think this is for walks. So a player that has a tendency to draw more walks will have the B rating. Over here, you could have a C or a K. And a C rating here for Pete Rose means that Pete has a lower tendency for a strikeout. And those plays come into, um, come into play on, uh, this rating comes into play on some chart results where it says a strikeout unless the batter has a C rating, which means he obviously is uh, more of a contact hitter. Now you go down here to Daryl Chaney, you can see that he strikes out more. You can see here that he doesn't walk as much. Um, this rating right here, this number, the number sign right here means that Chaney is a switch hitter. The asterisk next to Bravo and Klein means they're left-handed batters. So when you figure out the net, the net f batting factors, which we're going to do next, this comes into play when you're doing it. All right. So let's take a look at how you determine net batting factors because the net factors determine the adjustments to the dice rolls. All right. So let's take a look at the Montreal starter today. The Montreal starter is, oh yeah, Joe Sparma, okay? So his pitch factor, PF, that is based on earned run average. The higher the number, the better, okay? And his distance factor is the innings. I don't know why he started this inning or this game today, but... Obviously, the way that the season played out, he only started six games. You can see that over here. But he's starting today according to the box score. So his pitch factor is a two. Now, going back to Pete Rose, <clears throat> excuse me, going back to Pete Rose, Pete Rose is rated a seven, okay? So Merritt, with a pitch factor of two, Drops this to a five, but since Pete is a switch hitter, he will be batting from the opposite side, so you get to add one. So the lefty-righty factor will either add or subtract one to the net factor for each hitter. All right? So Pete Rose against Sparma is a seven minus Sparma's two is a five, Plus the switch hitter, he gets one for that. So Pete Rose's net factor will be 6W for the game. All right? So when you go to roll the dice, Pete will add five or add six to every dice roll. And the higher the dice roll, the, the more, the better the chance for the hit. All right. So conversely, let's take a look at the starter for the Reds today. Starter is Jim Merritt. He is a left-handed pitcher. His difficulty factor is a five, and his distance factor is an eight. He has an N rating so he doesn't walk a lot of batters. Um, this right here for pitchers, you can see that Don Gullett's more of a strikeout pitcher, so that'll help his strikeout numbers. Jim Maloney, all these other guys typically are going to be pitching to contact. All right? So they have it set up here. These are mainly all the starters that the Reds had that year. These are their hitting ratings. You can see the pitcher hitting ratings are lower. Uh, their running ratings are lower. And then you have your bullpen. You can see that Granger 
came out of the bullpen 67 times. He has a difficulty factor of seven. Reds have a really good bullpen here. Seven, and then you have Milt Wilcox down here. So what you do is you're going to set those ratings up before every game. Now, I've already done that for this game. And here are my ratings for everything. So what I basically do is I just take off. I just write. I don't do the net ratings here. I just take what's on the chart and I put it here. And then I look at my pitcher because they're obviously going to change every time you bring in a new pitcher. So you can see that Sutherland here is playing second base. He is a 4VC. And Merritt is a pitch factor of 5. Let's see, Sutherland is... I'm sorry. Yeah, it's going to be Merritt. He is not... Is he a left-handed pitcher? He is a left-handed pitcher. All right. So Sutherland is going to get one for the lefty-righty factor. So he's going to be five minus the pitch factor of five. It's going to bring him down to zero. Okay? So now let's take a look at the charts. The sequence of play goes like this. You're going to have two dice. Actually, you're going to have three. I typically have three. I left the other one in the other room. So, um, actually, we'll get it. Going to get the dice. All right, here we go. Okay, we're back. So, something that's interesting about this game that I haven't seen in any other games, or you can tell there, there are, there's a contact swing, so to speak, and like a power swing, all right? So the way that you do it is you're going to roll the, you're going to get the reading from, you're going to total these two, and then you're going to look at this to determine the type of swing that the batter is going to have. So... In a one to three, you're going to use this column right here. Four to six, you're going to use this column right here, the second column. So let's say that Sutherland is up. We've already determined that his net batting factor is zero. So what we have here is we have an eight, so he's going to see a change up. And he basically is going to have a, a contact swing. So you can see that when he has the contact swing, he's going to strike out less. Okay, so you, you can kind of assume that he's maybe behind in the count here. And we're going to take it from there. So his net rating is zero. Um, anytime you roll an 11 or a 66, there's no adjustment to that. All right. So we're going to roll the dice. It's a 44. His net rating is zero. And 44 says it's a grass cutter hit between second and short. And we're going to go to fielding chart four and look at the shortstop. Okay? So basically a hard hit ball up the middle, a range play for the shortstop. Shortstop is Concepcion. And his fielding rating is negative two. So we go to the grass cutter chart. We roll the dice, and this is something that I really like about this game. It's not just roll the dice, ground out to short. It's roll the dice, ball is drilled down the line. Ball is hit hard up the middle between, between short and second. Ball is looped into the outfield. Ball is a bouncing ball, kind of like that. The ball is hit on the ground, up the middle, Concepcion with a negative two, which is the worst fielding rating you can get, has to knock this ball down and get him. You roll the dice, 26 minus the two for Concepcion makes it a 24. And you can see that it's under the fielder's glove. It's a base hit. Runner stop, runner on first stops at second gives you all the things you need for advancement right here. All right? 
So Sutherland leads off the game with a single. We'll go to the next batter. Next batter is Rusty Staub. He's a left-handed hitter. He's Y. The B means that he has a tendency to draw walks. And he's a left-handed hitter. He's a left-handed hitter. So lefty versus lefty, five pitch factor, hitting factor of five for Rusty Staub. So that's zero. And then because he's a lefty, it's lefty against lefty. It's negative one. So Staub is going to be negative one when we roll on the pitch chart. So Staub is going to have a full swing at a fastball. Okay. So you have fastball, curveball, changeup, and then on the other side you have two-seamer, cutter, slider. Okay. Do all pitchers throw all those pitches? Obviously not, but it adds a little flair to the game anyway. So Rusty Staub, negative one, 24, drops it down to a 23, and that is a fly ball to center. And here we go again. Is it possible that we can stop doing the dark greens and the dark blues with a black font? Almost, it, it's really hard to read this stuff unless you get really close in there. So, Staub, anyway, is going to fly out to center field. This right here means that if you have a runner on third, you're going to use the tag chart. All right? A couple other charts we can take a look at. Um, the hit and run. You just, you just um, go through the play as normal, figure out what happened, and then... This tells you what to do. Stealing is really simple. What's the catcher's fielding factor? I think bench is a plus two or a plus one. You take the runner rating, and this is your safe chance. Right here. Stealing third, stealing home. Little bit more on that. Uh, let's see what else. These are your fielding charts. This is so. This is something that will come up on the connects chart, which I'm going to go to next. Um, these are deep fly balls, which adds, which which is also something that I really like because it adds to the suspense of going, going, gone type of thing. You know. Um, a lot of games, roll the dice, home run. Okay. This, roll the dice, it's a shot. Left field, going, going, is it gone? Is it a double? Is it caught? All those types of things. The nice thing about the 1970 season that comes with everyday player baseball, though, is that they have individual ballparks. So, in the case where you get that long fly ball and you're using fly ball chart seven, you can use this here. This right here is base runner advancement. FC9, whatever chart you're using, you instead of the, using the chart, you go to the ballpark, which is kind of nice. So it's FC9 and 56. That is going to be rolls to the wall and gives a nice visual. All runners score. A negative two runner stops at third base. Simple. There are no base running charts. Uh, everything is, is read from here and... Real simple. The game has some, I think this is really kind of a, a nice, unique feature. I really like the, the pitch, the fact that you know what kind of pitch it is, and the charts vary based on that pitch. Something that might be, you know, you might be able to house rule is taking a look at the types of pitchers each 
types of pitch each pitcher throws and then maybe changing these charts up a little bit, like changing the dice roll charts up a little bit to see, um, you know, a, a lot of the everyday player games or actually all of the everyday player games have, you know, room for a lot of room for house rule adjustments. So um, here's something that this walk chart here, if a, if a player is rated N, meaning he doesn't draw a lot of walks, that means he fouls it off. Here's a slow roller. But if the player does draw a lot of walks, he has that B rating, he's going to walk there. Pop out to the catcher. Does the pitcher have a K rating? Does the batter have a K rating? If so, strike out. Here's one where you can see that... If, that a hitter like Pete Rose, who has a good, he's a good contact hitter, he's going to foul out instead of striking out. On the four seam fastball, wild pitch, obviously, if they're men on base. Um, one thing I haven't seen in here is, is balks. So I'm, I'm not sure if that. Um, this right here is where a lot of the action happens when you get to these, these connects. So batter obviously makes good contact with with the pitch. Let's say it's uh let's say it's Johnny Bench. He has a Z rating. Tony Perez has a Z rating. So you take the Z rating, you look at the connects chart, re-roll them. One thing you'd ever do. You, there are no adjustments to di dice rolls on the Z chart, on the uh, the connects chart. So Johnny Bench with his Z connect rating 16. That's going to be a line single into right field. Runner advances two bases, and then you can see that if the runner is a negative one or a negative two, he's going to stop. At, he's going to advance only one base unless there are two outs, and then he advances two. How about this? If it would have been a 24, towering fly down the left field line. So we go to FC6, re-roll, 56, hooks foul. Restart the dice roll. Um, I've played like three games so far, and um, maybe... Because I'm getting used to the game, probably took me about 30 minutes to play a game, but you know, not much time at all. The thing that takes the most time is just you know figuring out what the what the net batting factor is. But it's just quick, simple math that you know maybe one or two things, and, and you just roll the dice from there. I'll I'll have once I once I write the net factors on the score sheet. I'll just move the, the team charts out of the way until it's time to make a change. I'll have the pitch chart in front of me like this with the score sheet to right. And away we go. So let's do a quick inning here with Sutherland leading off. Sutherland Four minus the five, negative one, but he gets the one because he's a righty versus lefty, so it's an even. So Sutherland is a six, going to be a curveball, going to be the first column since it was a one. Sixteen, that's going to be a bouncer to short. Concepcion's a negative two. Where's my fielding chart? Bouncer to short, Concepcion, negative two, 13. That's trouble, and that is going to be a wild throw into the dugout. <laughs> Sutherland's going to second, so that's going to be an E6, two base error. I always put him down here as well, Concepcion, so... Sutherland on at second with the error from Concepcion. Next batter is Rusty Staub. He's a five left-handed hitter, so he's going to be a negative one. Roll him. 
And the five is, five is a cutter. Negative one, 13, that is gonna be a strikeout. 13, negative one, down to 12. Stop a strikeout victim. Sutherland still at second. He has plus one on base speed. Next batter is Ron Fairley. He's a six, also a left-handed hitter. So he would be a plus one typically, but since he's lefty, you're going to subtract one. So he's going to be even on the dice roll. And this is a slider. Going to have a big cut at it. And 36 is a pop out to the catcher bench. So two quick outs. And Bailey to the plate. He's a ZZ on the power chart. Six righty. So he's actually going to be six minus five is one plus the one he gets for being a right-handed batter. He's going to be at two. And he is going to be swinging at the cutter, protected swing. So we're going to add two to the dice roll. Fifteen and two is a... Fly out the left, and the Expos go down. After the error by Concepcion, they leave Sutherland at second. So we go to the bottom of the first. It'll be Tolan, Helms, and Rose for the Reds. Tolan is a seven. Sparma is a difficulty factor of two. So Tolan is going to be plus five, plus six on the dice roll. So the first roll is to check the pitch. So six and a protected swing. Six is a curveball. Second column, adding six. It's a 12. So we go one, two, three, four, five, six, and that's a fly out to right. Tolan retired, one down. Helms, he is a four. You, he doesn't draw a lot of walks. He is a contact hitter. Helms, add two, subtract one. So Helms is a, add one, net one. And 10 is, let's see, 10 is a slider, second column. Add one, so it's 22 and he draws a walk, so a one-out walk to Helms, and here's Pete. Pete is plus six. Seven minus two is five, plus he's a switch hitter, so add one for that. So Pete is plus six on the roll, and five is the cutter. Pete with a contact swing, 35. Add five, one, two, three, four. That's a hard hit ball between, let's see, first and second. So he's a left, batting left handed. We're going to the first baseman's. We're going to take a look at the first baseman's range here. So first baseman is Ron Fairley. His fielding is zero. We go to the grass cutter chart. And let's see, roll them, 45. 45, he makes a nice pickup, fires the first in time, batter out, runners advance, one base. So Helms goes down to second. To three, we'll call it 3-1. So with two out and Helms at second, it's Perez. Helms has plus one on base speed. Tony Perez bats right-handed. He's a seven. So seven minus two is five. Minus the one is four. Add four to the Perez roll. And seven is a fastball. Fastball. And let's see. Tony is a plus four. 45 plus four. Yeah, he makes contact. And Perez is a Z. We go to the connects chart. 
Blue on the Connects shirt. Uh-oh, 55. 55 down the Z column. 55 is a long blast to right center. FC 10. Let's see. Perez, 22. See ya. Tony Perez, opposite field shot. Two-run bomb for Perez. Two-nothing Reds. There you go. Here comes Johnny Bench with two outs. And the Reds jumping on Sparm in the first inning. One out walk to Helms. Rose robbed of a hit by Fairley. And then Perez takes him deep. Johnny Bench, let's see, his factor is six minus five is one. It's a right-handed hitter. Loses another one, so it's going to be zero. Let's see, Johnny, fastball, swinging. First column, 14. And right-handed batter, bouncer to third. Third baseman is LeBoy, no fielding factor. Let's see the bouncer. 16. And he makes the play. So this says, this says out at second. It's basically a force play, but with no runner on first, batter out. So bench grounds out 5-3, inning over, end of one. Cincinnati 2, Expos nothing. Lastly, you get a lot of seasons with this game. Uh, if you buy the PDF version, which is what I did, uh, it's 15 bucks. I think I have eight or nine seasons. I have the 2016 season. I have the 2014 season. I have rosters for 86, 75, 72, 70, 64, 67, I can't remember, 69, there's there's a lot of them. Um, the two most recent seasons are 2014 and 2016, nothing from the 90s, nothing from the 2000s, um, 86, 75, 73, I don't know. Um, anyway, that is Everyday Player Baseball. Please let me know if I did anything wrong or if you have any house rules, but I'm going to be posting this shortly. Thanks.